What's up guys, Mr. Dan here back again, this time with my review of the final film in the In the Line of Duty box set that I got here. Um, in my first video, I went ahead and unboxed everything and reviewed the first two films. The second video I reviewed In the Line of Duty 3, and here's the final review In the Line of Duty 4. Uh, if you get a chance, please go back and check out those other videos. I'm not really sure why, but my the first review that I did for the box set has about a thousand views now. I'm pretty happy about that. Funny thing about that, I didn't mean to post that video and make it public. I thought it was private. And then I started seeing people leaving comments because I was actually going to change the thumbnail and the title. So I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. Like I'm like, I did not really think that thumbnail and or the title of it was very good. So then I modeled that when I did my Long Arm of the Law review. I said, let me use the same kind of title. And it didn't get that many views, comparatively, so I don't know the formula. But <laughs> at any rate, I've been enjoying these films, and I uh, appreciate all the comments from everyone, as always. Anyway, In the Line of Duty 4, the fourth film in the series, once again returning Cynthia Khan to the lead role. And Michael Wong is back, playing a character named Michael Wong again. Not to be confused with the Michael Wong that he played in the first film, who was actually killed off. And then you have Donnie Yen. Of course, playing a uh, police officer from Hong Kong who initially comes to Seattle to investigate some drug trafficking and is working with some of the uh, American police. So some of the action is in Seattle, and then it moves to Hong Kong. And then you uh, ha also have uh, Yun Yet Chor, who is, I mentioned in my, in the line of duty, or excuse me, does get confusing, in my Long Arm of the Law Saga 2 review... Right here, I mentioned that he was uh, Yu Wen Ping's brother, and that he did a great job in this film, and he also does a very good job in this role, acting wise and as far as fight, fight choreography, um, excellent job really. And what's sad is these two films were his last films, and then I thought maybe he transitioned into stunt work, because that's what happened to uh, Michiko. Let's see, Nishikawi, okay. She has had some acting roles. She was actually even in uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. But primarily, she transitioned, after making a few more films, she transitioned primarily into being a stunt woman. She was even the stunt double for O-Ren in uh, Kill Bill. So that's what I thought may have happened to Yun Yet Chor. But no, his last uh, behind-the-scenes work was in the line of duty three as the fight choreographer and then he called it a career i'm not really sure why but he was he's really good he's a very important part of this because he's a very sympathetic character he just he's in the wrong place at the wrong time um even when you, he like lives near the docks and his his apartment is like real grubby he's got oil drums with a with a, a board on top of it that's one of his tables i mean in his house and he's sleeping right there uh <laughs> and he's got a buddy who's alone who's in trouble with loan sharks so the two of them sort of uh, have to be rescued by these police officers. Uh, the action initially begins in, Hon in uh, Seattle with some really good fight scenes. One of the cops takes a picture of a drug transaction, and one of the participants happens to be in the CIA. So now all of a sudden, the stakes are really raised, and uh, there's a lot of people in power that don't want them to be successful and really want to find the dock worker who gets a hold of the film through a mix-up. Um, they're really good at like these crazy mix up in these mix ups in these movies. You know, somebody ends up having something they shouldn't be possessing and they don't know it. <laughs> uh, it seems it's like a trademark of these films. Um, now there's a, a quick fight scene on top of a roof in uh, Seattle, and the director actually said he wanted the same kind of antennas because remember this is back in the days when you had antennas on the roof of your house for. TV reception, he wanted the same type of antennas that you would see in Hong Kong, which I don't really understand why, but somehow the uh, the prop master found some. I don't, just a little detail. Um, so then the action moves to Hong Kong, and the police are trying to protect this poor guy, and he's, you know, he's, on the one hand, he's, he's on the run, and, but on the other hand, he's like, maybe I can go back and see my mom, and there's some heartbreaking scenes where he almost gets to see her and she doesn't know what's going on. She thinks it's all innocent. Eventually, she gets mixed up in it and the bad guys take her hostage. And it's it's pretty it's pretty sad, but also pretty exciting. Um, lots of really good villains in this. Uh, you've got uh, Michael Woods here, uh, muscle-bound American actor. He was 
uh, living there at the time, spoke Cantonese. Uh, he has a really good fight with Donnie Yen at the end. There's some pretty good moped, moped uh, chases, uh, kicking, punching each other, uh, you know, flying down very narrow alleyways and things. Really good stunt work in this, as you would expect. Um, really excellent film. Uh, probably enjoyed it a little more than, than part three. Uh, having Donnie Yen, of course, is always a plus. Uh, I have to say I really enjoyed the series overall. If there's a Hong Kong action film out there you'd like me to review next, let me know. I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, what are your thoughts on this film and or any of these films? And uh, please leave your comments below. Thank you.